just a quick forward to this video uh, the UPS uh, in this video is uh, a an SMT 2200 which is from 2010 and is running pre 08.00 firmware which means that it doesn't have Modbus support uh, like uh, the newer SMT UPSs do and that means that it's really gimped in how you can communicate with it with third-party software since it only supports the proprietary APC microlink interface over the external uh, communications ports and uh, a lot of the stuff I do in this video is just uh, trying to figure out a way around that Alright, we are back with the Smart UPS 2200 and uh, uh, I've been doing some digging about how to communicate with this thing since uh, it's only got uh, these communication ports essentially, this is just uh, an emergency shutdown thing and we've got this uh, RJ50 and a USB port, now the USB port's going to be just a normal USB port but you can never really get to the advanced diagnostics on an APC through the USB port at least you haven't in the past but supposedly there's serial coming through this thing and thankfully since APC in the past have been pushing these uh, USB to RJ50 wires, which uh, they wanted to make evil and proprietary, uh, I'm pretty certain they've used pins 1 and 10 on these for the USB. So, in order to make uh, a serial cable, uh, you c apparently can just use a normal network cable, which is what I've done here. I just hooked it up according to a schematic I found at uh, pinout.ru it's named the Smart UPS 5G cable pinite diagram and uh, supposedly this is going to allow me to communicate serially to this device uh, so I'm just uh, installing uh, APC UPSD and all the testing software on my bench computer and uh, we're about to find out and there we go, everything connected together leads and everything and APC UPSD is installed so let's see what, if we get any results Right, moment off truth, the UPS is connected, so let's launch your APC test and see what we get. Nothing. Well, a bit of research led, it seems things aren't quite as simple as I'd initially anticipated. Because it seems that we do have a serial port coming out of this connector, but it no longer supports the APC smart protocol. Because APC have just introduced some new proprietary thing to replace that, which they obviously don't provide any real documentation for, so there's no third party software to use with it. So, of course, I just started probing around this thing, and it does have quite a few little pin headers and stuff going on inside, including the smart slot connector in there. But something interesting I did find is this little six pin connector sitting right there. Uh, to which uh, I connected this little uh, TTL to serial converter and it's just continuously putting out some raw serial data and if we just unplug that we can see that this is, looks a lot like the status string coming out of a normal APC smart protocol except it's just looping it over and over but this is obviously uh, some kind of uh, serial output so perhaps there's some kind of serial input on this connector as well. It's level J606. So I'm going to have to dig around with that because uh, apparently getting normal smart UPS out of this uh, connector is impossible according to the internet. I can't know for certain but all the experiments I've done have just uh, been futile. I haven't been able to get anything sensible out of it. But yeah, this looks, this looks promising. Very promising indeed. Oh yes, we are onto something, we are onto something indeed. I did some tracing on these uh, pins, and it seems the top left ones, uh, pins, uh, I don't know what I labelled that, but yeah, the top left ones, if we look from this way, they go for a couple of V years to the other side, and uh, they continue, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it very well, but uh, they continue entirely parallel to each other, so I figured, yeah, okay, well, try and hook it hook up straight to those and just bet that one of them is uh, going to be the receiver pin on the UPS side and check this out when I turned it on we got the question mark like you're supposed to get sent it a Y and we got smart 
then I pressed B and we've got for battery voltage and I, I pressed one, waited a couple of seconds and pressed one again and we got prog. So yeah, this is definitely the traditional APC uh, smart uh, protocol we're dealing with here. It's even going into the programming mode so I should actually be able to, if it's configured like the old ones, I should even be able to set a battery voltage this way. Rob, this is a big one. Can you still adjust the battery charge voltage? Oh, that's changing, isn't it? Yeah, that's responding. Oh, that's fantastic. So you can still adjust the charge voltage on these. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, that's just wonderful. That makes me so happy. So happy indeed. So you have to do it a bit of a roundabout way, but you still get the APC Smart Protocol in these. So... The question that's in my mind right now is, uh, should I just uh, hook that up to the MAX232 that's sitting in there? Because that's what's driving the serial port in the stupid RJ50 connector there, and that's just got the new horrible protocol you don't want to use. Now that would be a real simple way to do it. I think this is 5 volt signalling, so the MAX232 should be happy about it. And the protocol you get in there seems to be pretty worthless. Mm, I've got to play around with this a bit more and make sure it works perfectly, but that certainly seems like an option. Ah, oh, you can set the battery voltage! Whew, thank goodness, I was worried for a moment there. And just to verify, the signal level seems to be 5 volt indeed. Mm, playing around with this further seems to indicate that uh, Connecting something to that internal serial port really confuses the front panel because the UPS is running with the mains right now, even though it thinks it's running with a battery. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it says that it, yeah, it's on battery. Oh, it's it loaded down 2970 watts. Warning state communication. Output 230 volts, 64 hertz. Yeah, this thing is really confused, isn't it? Runtime 3 hours 48 minutes, <laughs> and I've got a load on it. I mean, geez, this thing just has no idea what's going on. And uh, the pay button doesn't work, it just doesn't react. And when I've forcibly shut the unit off, it's not been able to turn on as long as the serial converter is connected. Uh, also, the beeper doesn't work, whatever you do. So that's quite strange, quite strange indeed. Now that could have something to do with uh, that being some kind of tri-state pin and uh, the in in input impedance of this is just pulling it down to ground and it isn't just, it's just unable to drive it properly, but it seems a bit weird. The communication seems to work perfectly though, if I just uh, have it connected to the computer, all the data is there everything's working perfectly, it behaves just like a traditional UPS, so there are very few issues there. But, hmm, yeah, I suppose I'm going to have to try and use it with some kind of Max 232 device and see how it behaves when connected to that, because, you yeah, know, this is a dodgy Chinese little converter. I'm not even certain if it's actually 3.3 volt levels or 5 volt levels on it, to be briefly honest with you. I suppose I, I should uh, give the Modbus uh, thing in APC UPSD a try as well, see if you can do anything with it. The important thing, uh, which is implicated by this actually working, is that you can actually adjust the battery voltage on it. That's my main reason for trying to get any kind of traditional interface working, because I want to be able to set the battery voltage, and as should everyone. It was set to reasonably low on this one for... by default it was set to... Point, uh, about for the equivalent of 13.7 volts per battery cell, or 13.75 per about, which is pretty okay. Uh, certainly not as bad as the old ones tended to be, with battery voltage upwards of uh, 14 volts. But depending on what batteries you've got connected, you want to be able to adjust that. And for my yellow power safes, uh, they certainly don't want 13.7, and they want closer to 13.6. So at least I know I can adjust that.
But yeah, whether or not I end up using this or Modbus, I guess Modbus will have to speak for itself. And yeah, the moment I disconnect the communication port, uh, the green light turns on and the power button starts working. I'm not sure about the beeper. Let's try the beeper. Yeah, the beeper works. So everything works fine when you disconnect that. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, it starts working perfectly. Well, this is a bit weird. Uh, right now we are connected up to the pin that's uh, also the RX pin in the UPS internal serial port and it's putting out this over and over again, just some kind of data. I don't know how to decipher that. But yeah, this pin seems to be an output uh, if there's nothing connected to it. And when you connect something to it, uh, it apparently detects that you've got a low impedance there. Well, I've been probing around quite a lot in this now, and uh, it seems as if, as if there isn't really a very good way of utilising uh, J606 here to permanently communicate with the UPS because it gimps the front panel. It just kind of stops working and uh, yeah, the unit just behaves really weird. In particular the power button doesn't work which is a bit of a bother and the power meter doesn't work either. So basically the front panel becomes useless. It does present the correct data to the computer though so if you wanted to use this for just a remote UPS I suppose it would probably work quite fine. But uh, I, since I'm mostly just concerned in setting the charge voltage, which you can do through this uh, header by just uh, using one of these devices and then disconnecting it after you're done, uh, I'm more interested now in trying to get the proper communication working with this thing. And uh, that means that I'm going to have to update the firmware because APC have uh, two communication options for this uh, V series. One is called Microlink, which is entirely proprietary and horrible, and another one is called Modbus, which uh, supposedly work for, works with APC UPSD. And uh, you don't get support for Modbus in uh, the older units. Uh, this one just has a too old of a firmware. But APC do provide a firmware, firmware update, so let's just try and see if we can push that in and see if this still works after the update. Well, after doing a bit of more research, it seems uh, like uh, the only useful feature we've gotten out of this firm was a backlight dimming feature and an ability to turn it off. Because uh, this UPS is apparently too old to run the newest firmware, which is the only firmware which supports Modbus. I would have to upgrade to a firmware of, uh, I believe it's 9.3, but you need to have a unit equipped with firmware 8.0 or later in order to do that. So, it seems as far as Modbus is concerned, uh, I'm screwed. So, I'm going to have to keep researching how to get this thing running with the other serial port, because else I'm just uh, out of luck as far as... Uh, communication with APC UPSD is concerned. But hey, at least I can now turn the display off. Hooray. So with that flop out of the way, um, I'll just keep working on the little internal 5 volt uh, serial port. And I just found out something a bit weird. So the top left pin of the J606 connector here obviously has two purposes. It can be some kind of uh, RX thing uh, and it can transmit some kind of data. Now I've been taking a few pictures of the board and uh, checking out where everything's going and uh, that pin is going through a serial uh, link here and then goes to one of the pins on this processor thing. And what I've done now is uh, remove this link and uh, if we probe J606 now with a link removed uh, something's just spamming why, 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 why? So, something inside the unit is uh, trying to use the smart protocol to enter smart mode and do something. But I can't really figure out what, and it's weird because I couldn't figure out if this uh, pin would go anywhere else than to that pin on the processor, and it quite clearly does. So, hmm, I'm gonna have to intercept that and figure out where it's actually going.
because if we can uh, manage to separate the TX and RX sections of this uh, J606 header, then we might be able to actually use the serial port without killing the front panel. I'm digging deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole, so it seems uh, that what we've got here is uh, we basically have two microprocessors which are communicating be between each other. Uh, this one's got a label saying COM, and uh, this one seems to be the main processor of the unit. And uh, what pins 1 and 2 on J606 do is uh, that, that they're basically monitoring the TX and RX lines between these. So what I've done now is uh, I've desoldered a 0 ohm jumper, which was in serial for the uh, TX line to the main processor, and I've intercepted that with my serial thingy. And uh, I'm also monitoring what the uh, communications processor is trying to do. And... Uh, it's, it's, it's the communications process that's just spamming the Y, 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 Y into the terminal. And if we uh, emulate that and just send a heap of Ys, uh, you can see that it's, uh, it sends a heap of commands that's requesting some data out of the main process. And those are just uh, line frequency and stuff like that, just and battery voltage and so forth. So uh, that's what's causing the uh, parameter spam we saw uh, when we first hooked the... Uh, serial interface up, so the communications process is just requesting data over and over again very quickly and when it doesn't get any data it just goes into why, 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 why won't you respond? I would figure that that has something to do with uh, driving the front panel because I think the front panel is uh, driven by the communications processor and uh, yeah, the front panel isn't getting any data now either so that does explain why the front panel won't work properly when we're hooked up in here, because we're simply interrupting the polling of information uh, that the front panel communications processor is doing, so there's just uh, no data there to present, and uh, that really makes it a bit of an issue getting this to work, because uh, we obviously need to keep polling the a process for that data in order for the front panel to work, yet we also need to keep pulling the main processor for our own data. So, yeah, I suppose we'd really need some kind of switching mechanism to go between the two in order to have both working, because I, I can't really see a way around that, because the communications process is just spamming why it's spam spamming for data as fast as it can. And uh, what we do when we hook ourselves up uh, uh, directly to J606 uh, is that uh, the low output impedance of our uh, converter is just shorting out the communications processor since it's going to a, through a 200 ohm resistor and I've, I'm pretty certain there's a relatively you know, low output impedance on the TX line of the little div USB to serial TTL device I'm using so that explains why just the front panel kind of doesn't work properly anymore. The fact that it just keeps on spamming like this though does indicate that it's got a kind of failsafe built in. It's running just uh, pretty stupidly. It's, it doesn't seem to have much feedback from the other processors. So implementing some kind of switching algorithm wouldn't probably wouldn't be too big of a deal just having it switch. Uh, between the two uh, communications devices uh, every second or so uh, it would of course uh, mean that you'd have a delay on using the front panel and I'm not certain how well APC UPSD would handle losing communications every now and then although yeah, I suppose you could uh, adjust the polling interval but uh, yeah getting that to work uh, it wouldn't really be too big of a hurdle to actually implement this using microprocessors since you could have a microprocessor listening to the computer's serial port and when it detects a pull it would switch over uh, disconnect the communi communications processor and uh, do the pull, pull the data then reconnect the communications processor and let you use the front panel again yeah but I'm not good at making that kind of stuff but ah. It's difficult getting anywhere around that because you you can't really have anything you can't really have the two systems running together at once. 
Now that said, it, it seems if you just uh, ignore the communications processor entirely, it seems you can run the UPS uh, as any other uh, smart UPS. You can turn it on, you can uh, turn it off, you can get uh, pretty much all the data you, you would expect to get out of it. So well, the, the, this is definitely confirmed it's running an absolutely bog standard smart protocol internally. It's just that they uh, have disabled external use of it. I'm just uh, shoving random uh, points out of the smart protocol documentations onto this. And uh, yeah, it's behaving exactly as you'd expect it to. So yeah, I think I'm going to end this video right here, because I don't think it's going to turn into anything else than insane, weird explorations. But yeah, the conclusions to be drawn are obviously that it is possible to use a monitoring tool like APC UPSD with a pre-Modbus SMT series smart UPS, as long as you figure out some way around the front panel issue, which really is a bit, it isn't a big deal, as long as you put some thought and effort into it. There are a couple of commands I haven't been able to figure out readily, for instance, what the turn on the outlets would be, because that's an option which I can't find in any APC smart protocol documentation, it's probably a relatively new feature, but Finding anything you can do from the front panel out is going to be extraordinarily easy since you've got this uh, J606 pin header where you can just uh, sniff all the communications between the, the UPS main processor and the communications processor. So, yeah, running this thing should be really easy as long as you put your mind to it, and I, I'm certainly going to do something about it. But yeah, I hope you find this uh, a bit uh, interesting, at least I'm not looking forward to editing this video, but yeah, cheerio!